So it is getting close to time to plant our fall garden. So, really, Ollie? <laughs> really? Why don't you lay down? No, lay down. Lay down. You can save your seeds however you want to save your seeds. Um, some people just stack them in a box. Thanks, Brian. Some people, um, I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen cute little containers and all of that. I'm not going to invest that kind of money. We have about 800 of <laughs> these tubs, which I use in my classroom quite a bit. But since we had so many, I thought, hmm, why not read it out in the garden? Watering and I am completely dehydrated. Um, so what I've been doing so far this year is separating them by things that like more of a cool crop, my flowers, and then things that like to grow during a warm climate, okay? Now obviously there's gonna be a little bit of crossover there, but I also have got a couple of new things in. This is from Haas Tools. And let's see, kohlrabi, which is probably going to be one of the things that we plant for our fall garden. Um, this is the purple Vienna kohlrabi, and it says 40 to, 45 days to maturity. So that's once you have a, a seedling in the ground. So what I'm getting ready to do is actually start seeding. I'll do that here in the house. Um, rig up some grow lights. Melons, I won't have time for that. More melons and more tomatoes, which I also will not have time because I have about 35 potato or tomatoes out there right now and they are definitely going to continue to go until pretty much the end of our growing season. So let's see what we have. These are from Baker Creek. Um, a tomato, ooh, beautiful, beautiful sunflower. I'm gonna save these. I don't wanna plant any more sunflowers, but these are the Autumn Beauty. I cannot wait to plant those this next year. More tomatoes. These are going to be interesting. I got these because they're unique to me. I've never grown them and they look really cool, almost like a pear. They're Golden King of Siberia. Super excited about that. Dr. Witchy's Dad Sunset. More melons. Um, bok choy. I think we will do some bok choy. This is the Suzu Baby. Sazu, baby, I don't know. Um, oh, this was a, the free seed that they send. And this time they sent me some lettuce, which I love. This is the Paris Island cause. And we will definitely be planting some lettuce. Okay, I really probably need to succession plant with my cucumbers. I have eight cucumber plants out there right now, which will give me a ton of cucumbers. I have um, both slicing and pickling. And um, these are the Burpless Beauty. Let's see, what else do we have? We've also got the Tender Green Burpless. So I think I'm gonna do the 55 Days, which are the Tender Green Burpless. And these are um, a burpee seed. And I think I'll try some of those. Okay, you guys, my peppers are like causing me anxiety. <laughs> For real because the aphid issue and it's almost exclusively my peppers this year I don't know what it is I don't know if it's the new compost that we're using I don't I just don't know but um, yes I have peppers growing I thought this was the pepper year like they were growing so beautifully so amazing and all of a sudden they are just literally inundated with these dumb aphids and um, I've tried several things I'm gonna continue to try several things I do have peppers growing um, but they just aren't as healthy as they should be aphids suck the um, 
juices the liquids out of the plant and so obviously they're not doing as well as they should because they're covered in these things so I'm on the verge of doing a no-no and using something a little bit stronger. I don't know. If I do, maybe I'll tell you, maybe I won't. I don't know, but your garden, your rules. So I will decide what I'm gonna do in my garden. Um, all I know is if I do nothing, I'm gonna lose the plants completely. And there's a whole lot of peppers out there. So I'm not gonna plant any more peppers this year. Um, my Kajari are doing super well. I don't want to plant any more of those. I have a ton of beans out there. Do I want to plant more beans? Let's hold on to that thought for a minute. Oh, Baker Creek sent me some chives as one of their free seeds. But if I'm going to grow them, I want to grow them in a container because they would, it looks like they'd be a perennial. They're winter tolerant, great for the greenhouse. Um, yeah, and it says that they are, they sprout in seven to 14 days, and then you can start cutting on them once they're tall enough to use, obviously. I think I might use those. These are the Chinese chives. It says they have a really mild flavor. Those are from Baker Creek. I have more beans here. I'm gonna table that. These are from Emma Gardner, more tomatoes. These I can't wait for for next year, but it's gonna have to wait because these are definitely gonna be heat loving. These are the uh, lemon spice jalapeno and they, I'm told that they are amazing, that they have a little bit of that citrus flavor. Ground cherries are gonna wait. Oh, these look like spaghetti squash, obviously gonna wait. Okay, so the beans I will decide on. And then I have a bunch of lettuces in here. I've got gourmet blend and a Chinese cabbage. I think I definitely will do the Chinese cabbage and I will do the lettuce because I know I had another one in here but it's a different type. And I love the cut and come again lettuce. That's how I've always grown it. I've never really let it form into a head um, because we eat a ton of salads around here, at least once a day, um, sometimes more. And so, you know, it doesn't have a chance to form into a head around here. We're gonna cut it, it's gonna grow up, we're gonna cut it again and on and on and on until it is no more. Um, and then I don't think I'm gonna plant any more flowers this year. So if you have planted four o'clocks, let me know your thoughts. I have some and I just didn't get to it this year, but I will plant them next year. Um, but I'm curious, do, do I need to plant them in um, a permanent place? I've heard that they are perennial. Also, you know, do you love them? Do you hate them? Like, are they invasive? Tell me about that. I'm in, in zone 6B. Um, I just love to hear your thoughts. I've researched it a little bit, but there's not a ton of the kind of information I'm looking for. And I'd really prefer to have somebody's um, personal experience, actually. So I have beans. Let's make a decision on beans. I have the Kentari. That's from Baker Creek, which is what I have planted out there right now. And I have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 11 of those right now. And then I have strike beans and blue lake beans. Blue lake I know is super common. It's what so many of us are used to. And um, it says very popular for many decades. This bean produces insane amounts of dark green stringless beans. I love stringless. I don't like dealing with that. Uh, the, this variety is cold and heat tolerant. 
It's a favorite for many market growers due to the reliable yield, good size, and a steady output for all season. Many like the bush version due to its compact size and little growing impact. Okay. And then this is the strike bean. It says this variety has been a favorite for commercial production because of its heavy yield and great flavor. Stringless beans known for their concentrated pod sets and are ideal for canning or freezing. It says they are 55 days and the Blue Lake is 50 to 65. I have grown Blue Lake. I have never grown the Strike. I'm gonna save the Strike for the spring. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the Blue Lake mostly because they are heat and cold tolerant and I'm not really sure what's gonna happen this fall. I know it seems counterintuitive to a lot of you probably who are thinking, why are you planning your fall garden right now? It's not fall. It like summer has not even officially began. That's like in the next couple of days. Um, and here's why you plant your summer garden in the spring. You plant your fall garden in the summer. So for me, most of my fall garden items need to go in the ground like end of July. Okay. So I need to start seeds within the next week or two. So that's why I'm planning it now. If you have not thought about that, you know, maybe you don't want to do a full on fall garden and that is perfectly fine, but try something, see what happens. Um, you know, try, try some beans. They are honestly some of the easiest to grow and, or try some lettuce. Like I direct, so this year I tried, um, growing in the soil bags. I did microgreens that way. It was so amazing. I am absolutely doing that with my lettuce. Um, Mark built me a lettuce table to be able to, that fits perfectly the soil bag. So we'll, we just pop them in, we cut out the top and we plant right in there. Uh, it helps to retain the moisture. You drill some holes in the bottom. I actually think I saw this idea on Roots and Refuge. Um, so if you want to check that out, Jess has a great video on doing that. And it worked so amazing for us that I, I will definitely do that again. And it also saves me up space in my beds for other things so I can use my lettuce table. Um, I had a lot of people when I first posted a picture, they're like, oh, it's going to dry out so fast and all of that. But when you're using the bags, it does not dry out really fast. So give it a try. It, it's a pretty amazing way to grow your lettuce. Okay guys, um, I think I'm gonna keep this one pretty short and simple. So this is gonna be my uh, fall garden right here. All of these. If you have any ideas of things that you think I should grow in my fall garden, comment below. Um, if you tried something and it didn't work or it did and it was amazing and you're just like, I've got to share this idea. Go ahead and comment below. And also if you're in zone 6B and you're, you know, checking out our videos and you're a gardener and you've got some ideas or you've done something cool or you have a neat idea, share it with us. We love to hear all that kind of stuff. All right, guys. Thank you.